a wonderful day to be alive once again to see this beautiful day on Dove Television. I want to welcome you all to another exciting edition of Springs of Life. My name is Olua Femi Odonto. It's good to be alive and it's good to always give thanks to God at all times. Let's just appreciate him and say, Father, thank you for another brown new day. If you're just watching this program or you just tune to Dove Television, it's Springs of Life and it's a program that is dear to us on Dove Television, a program based Bible-based program. We come here to talk about God, His loves, and what He has in stock for us. Dove Television is on all social network. Like us on Facebook, tweet at us. Um, get to watch exciting and interesting program of our Father and the Lord, the General Vasi of the Redeemed Christian Church of God on our YouTube page, and all other anointed men of God. Like us, tweet at us, appreciate us in every way, and we want to welcome you as Dove Television family. All right, we have a special guest here with us. He's one of our very own pastor in the Redeemed Christian Church of God, an assistant pastor in charge of parish. That's Beautiful Gate Parish, Lagos Province 1. We have Pastor Jonathan Kuchi here with us on our hot seat, Springs of Life hot seat. Welcome <laughs> on this program, sir. Thank you so much for having me, Nova. Thank you so much for coming, and it's good to have you. Thank you. We'd like Pastor Jonathan Kuchi to please lead us in a short prayer while we proceed on this program. Thank you. King of glory, we say thank you again for another day in your presence. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the love which you have for us. Thank you. Lord, as we discuss and look into your word today, we ask that by reason of this program, you will bring us to the full measure of what you intend for us to be in life. Amen. Thank you, our Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for that short prayer. Thank you. All right, you can also be part of Springs of Life by listening to us. Uh, what we do here, we search into the scriptures, search more of the word of God, because he's our maker, he's our redeemer. We put our trust in God and not in man. So please come along with us and be part of this uh, discussion on Springs of Life. We're looking at the topic, Awaken the Sleeping Giant in Us. Who is that sleeping giant or who has been sleeping, that giant that's been sleeping that you want God to awake? It might just be spiritual aspects and you want God to awake the giant in you. Feel free to be part of this um, morning program and God bless you as you do so. So please listen as we go along. Once again, I want to welcome Pastor Jonathan Kuchi for coming on this program. Awaken the sleeping giant in you. Who is a giant or what is a giant? Well, a giant, just plain English, is someone or something that is very big. Um, we remember in the Bible we have the story of David and Goliath. The Bible says Goliath was so tall you know, he, he, he's so tall, he's so huge. So we call him a giant, oversized, beyond the normal, beyond the average. So when you say something is giant, it's, it's, it's beyond the normal size. It's, it's, it's really, really big. Um, strong, powerful, you know, beyond normal expectations. So that's a giant. Um, and then the topic says, Awakening the Giant in you, in me. So, you know, there's something inside us. We may look normal on the outside, but it is something. I remember reading a book by a famous preacher some years ago, and he said, you are more than 10 times bigger on the inside than you are on the outside. Mm. And it takes understanding that for you to wake it up. Mm. Mm. We are more than 10 times bigger inside that than we are on the outside. outside. All right, now let's look at the scripture. And yes. this is where I want people to pay attention and listen. Yes. Let's look at the scripture. Let's search the scripture where God talks about the giant in us. I think um, let's start first of all, but we are human beings. How did man come to be? Who is man? Mm. We are giant by creation. When God was creating everything. He would just say, let this be, let that be, let that be. Let that be light, there was uh -huh. light. And then when he came to creating man in Genesis chapter 1, he said, let us make man in our image hmm. and in our likeness. He said, and God made man in his image and his likeness, and God blessed hmm. them and said, 
a fruitful multiply. Genesis 1, 26 to 31. Mm. Say, be fruitful, multiply, replenish, have dominion, subdue. So man is a replica of God. Mm. Man is a replica of God. That is, is so deep. It's so deep. You know, an image, I'm sure those of you who are watching me now, you will say you are seeing us, but they are not seeing us. They are seeing our image. So what you are seeing on your television screen, on your computer, on your laptop, on your phone, whatever device you are using, is our image. It's a representation of us. So when God said, let's make man in our image, so let's look something, create something that when, when you see it, you are seeing us. Hmm. So we, 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 are, we are a picture of God. We are a replica of God. So that, that in itself is a giant thing. We, 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 if you sit down to meditate deeply on it, look at Adam, analyze the life of Adam, See how strong he was. See how intelligent he was. Naming all the animals. You know, people are still studying today in the fields of, um, of science to be able to identify different species. Abraham did all that. He had all that knowledge in his head. You know, he, 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 and he didn't go to a school. He, hmm. he, it was in, in him, inbuilt in him. You've seen creativity of man, sparks of creativity. How did man come to produce electricity? How did man come to discover tablets that we are using? How did man come to discover these systems where we are here in the redemption camp in Ogun State, Nigeria, West Africa, and somebody is watching us in Papua New Guinea? Mm. Uh, hundreds of kilometers, of thousands of kilometers away. That should show you the giant, and this is, this is man. If one man can do it, every other man has something similar in mm. him. So by creation, we are, we are not ordinary. Mm. We, are not, we are not small. We are, we are, not, we are not useless. Mm. Every human being, by creation, we are giants. Mm. Created uniquely for something. Every human being was created with an inbuilt, inbuilt thing that he should unleash on earth. Going further from there, you can say, okay, man sinned, man fell into sin, man, the devil took over. Yes. But if you're a child of God, the day you gave your life to Jesus Christ, in John chapter 1, from verse 10 down to 12, say he came to his own, his own did not receive him, but as many as received him, he gave them the right to be called sons of God. Immediately you become born again, you are now another level of giant. Mm. They say, if you trace in one of the genealogies, I think it's in the book of Luke, either the genealogy in the book of Luke or the one in Matthew, this began that, this began that, when he got to Adam, Enos was the son of this, this one was the son of that. He got to Seth, he said he was the son of Adam. And when they say of Adam, they say, and Adam was the son of God. So Adam is called the son of God. They come back to John 1, verse 11 and 12. I am called a son of God. I've been given the right to be called a son of God. Meaning that in the new creation, everything Adam lost, I got it back. So as I'm sitting here, I'm a, I'm a son of God. And we know that a father and a son, I have the picture of my father on, in the wall of my room. People come inside and they look at it. Say, Pastor, this is not you. No, I say it's my father. Oh, wow. Why? It's my father. There is, a, there is a similarity. A father and a son are of the same essence. If I'm a son of God, if I'm a child of God, there is something about God in me. There is a seed of God in me. That's a, another level of giant food. Now go from there. Every child of God, in, in, in 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, 1 John 5, verse 4, mm. it says, Whatsoever is born of God, God. overcometh the world. Whatsoever is born of God. If it's possible for this table to be born of God, 
it will overcome the world. But a table cannot be born. I as a child of God, I mean, a human being, I can be born of God, and I'm born of God. So there's, a, there's something in me, the nature of God is in me. Just like whatsoever is born of a lion overcomes a dog and a goat. Hmm. So it's born of God. I'm born of God. This, 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 a, this a seed of God in me that makes me strong, better, hmm. higher, powerful than others. But go further from that. Every child of God, Colossians 1, 27 says, Christ in you, the hope. the hope of glory. I mean, who is dwelling inside me? Jesus is dwelling inside me. Remember in Revelation 3.20, Revelation 3.20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man open, I will come in. You know, sometimes we'll get there, but <laughs> did I open the door? Yes, I did. Oh, so he's inside. Where does Jesus live? In heaven? Yes, he's in heaven. Where does Jesus live? In the church? Yes. But where does Jesus actually live? He's here. Mm. So if Jesus is in me, not just a portion of Jesus, mm. The Bible says that in Jesus Christ, the fullness of the Godhead dwelleth bodily. Mm. And if the fullness of God dwells in Jesus and Jesus is in me, that means the fullness of God is in me. Mm. Not a portion of God. God in his fullness is on the inside of me. Acts 1.8. Acts 1.8. And you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come, come upon, upon you. you. Mm. Have I been filled with the Holy Spirit? Yes. Do I speak in tongues? Yes. So what is on the inside of me? Power. 1 John 4 4, 1 John 4 4, it says, Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. This, this, are, this, are, this, are, this is who we are. This is who we are. Then I've talked about being a giant by creation. I've mm. talked about being a giant by spiritual birth. Breath. I've talked about being a giant by God that dwells inside us. God the Son, God the Spirit dwelling inside us. How about being a giant by impartation? Mm. Paul told Timothy, he says, tear up the gift of God that is in you by the laying on of my hands. You are watching me today and men of God have been laying hands on you. Mm. I want to ask you what you have been doing with those hands. That has been, been laid, laid on you. Oh, this March special Holy Ghost service. Oh, we are all there. Uh, convention, we are there. Congress, you are there. Oh, the wave handkerchief, you wave your anointing service, you attend. Something is being deposited in you on the inside of you. Mm. If you are a pastor, for example, you are a deacon, you are an assistant pastor, or you have been ordained at all, mm. on the day of ordination, something was put inside you that you need to wake up. Mm. So we are giants. And if we are giants, there is something they call potential energy, mm. and there is something that is called kinetic energy. Potential energy is, is there. If you don't touch it, it's just lying there. For example, a generator, a 500 kV generator can power mm -hmm. a, at least a portion of your, of your village, of, mm -hmm. your, of, your, of your town. In fact, it can power some small villages. It has fuel inside. It's lying there. It's a huge giant. Mm -hmm. Or it's asleep. Or your car packed in your compound. Is there. Mm. The ignition key is there. But until you start that car and begin to move it, mm. it's a huge machine just waiting. So we are, we are giants. And I pray we won't die sleeping. Amen. That's my prayer <laughs> also. <laughs> so whatever giants want to um, ask God to awake for us this morning, I think this is the right time we need to pray and ask God to do that. For us now, um, how do we go about using this um, giant in us for other people to benefit in a good way? You know, you talked about laying of hands, laying the handkerchief, and all that. Most of us we've heard of testimony people. There was one I I can really remember that of his um, sister that has been dead, I think seven days or mm -hmm, something, mm -hmm, and yeah. he made use of that handkerchief and she woke up. Yeah. You know. That's somebody demonstrating the giant in him. There are other people that are afraid of going out there, yeah. most especially preaching to people, evangelism, and daddy has keep, um, daddy keep emphasizing on it, go out there. And even God said it, that we should go out there, preach, mm. tell people about God. A lot of people are afraid of doing that. There are so many things that in us 
as an individual, as human being, that many a times when you want to demonstrate it, you are afraid. Mm. I don't know. Let them not say I'm using magic, or let them not say I'm um, I too sabi over too sabi. You do things, you know. So how do we, as an individual, you know, I don't want to say manage our life in that aspect, so that people don't we don't take the glory to ourselves. Rather, mm. let the glory be for God. I think the beginning point is understanding who we are. I mean, I've, I've just listed very easily all these things. And I tell you, today's topic, like we discussed off air, I'm crying to God. When I saw the topic, I said, wow, me and Seth, I need help. So you that is listening to me, together, we need help. Because what I've shared now, I ask myself over and over, mm. do I fully comprehend what I say? Mm. Because it's easy to know it in your head. It's easy to preach it. Am I really walking fully as a son of God? Do I know the full implication of being a son of God? Mm. Do I know the full implication of having God inside me? Of having Jesus inside me? Of having the Holy Ghost inside me? Do I know the full implication of being created for dominion? Mm. Do I know the full weight of what God has put inside me? But you see, you need to study. Mm. If they make you president of Nigeria today, you will need to go and study the duties, your rights, your privileges, your power, its limits, its extent, mm. before you can operate in that office. God has made us. So we need to spend time to understand, study the word of God. What does God say about you? If you are a child of God, what does God say to you? You know, some of us only know what we hear from preachers. Mm. It depends on the preachers you are hearing. If you are hearing the preachers who are always telling you about demons, some of us even know more about demons than we know about who we are. Mm. That's why some people, when they wake up in the night, mouth in the night and they hear a cockroach moving in the room. They begin to say, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus. Cockroach. Cockroach is to carry broom and kill it if you don't want to use your slippers. Do you know what is inside you? Study it. Mm. Meditate on it. And like I said, knowledge is not just what you know in your head. Yes. It's what is like a revelation. It what becomes life inside you. For example, the Bible says, I shall lay my hands on the sick and they shall recover. It's easy to quote that scripture. Hmm. These signs shall follow, follow they that. that believe. And it's, remember, he said they that believe. He didn't say shall follow general overseers, shall follow pastors, shall follow ordained ministers, shall follow great men of God. No, these signs shall follow those that believe. Until I, that becomes a revelation. Until that becomes knowledge that is not just in your head, but is burning in your heart. So that comes by studying you. So the, the beginning point is studying to understand who am I? What is it that God has done for me? What is it that God has done in me? Because we are crying to God to come down, holo, and manifest your power. Yes. But maybe God is also singing, rise up, my son, and manifest your power. He has put something inside. Mm. He's expecting us to, 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 to do something. We are expecting him to do something. He said, boy, but I've given you what you need to walk. I'm in heaven. You are here. What did I put inside you? So use it. Use what you have. Then the next level is to believe. He said, this sign shall follow those who believe. After you discover what is inside you, you may, you may read it and you say, no, 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 this can't. For example, oh, greater is he that is in me yeah, than he, he that is in the, the world. world. Is it true? The devil is powerful. Ah, the devil is powerful. Ah, the witches in my village, hey, they operate in the daytime, broad daylight. That woman, ah, I know her, she killed her husband, she killed her child. She, ah, don't joke with The Bible said, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You need to believe. Fear is not faith. Mm. Fear will drive out faith. Faith will drive out fear. So we must really, really believe what the 
God of heaven and earth is saying about me, about us. Then we move from knowing to believing. Then there must be this connection with God, strong connection, because we are giants, but we don't operate independently hmm. of the super giant. Our gianthood is tied to the giant of the universe. There must be a cord connecting us. If not, the flow to make us operate in fullness will not come. Jesus said, you are the vine, I am the vine, you are the branches. Without me, you can do nothing. If we have a strong connection, that is where fellowship comes. And you know, I deliberately use the word fellowship and not prayer. Mm. The reason I didn't use the word prayer is that many of us take prayer as a mechanical thing. Prayer is about fellowship. Fellowship is just like we are talking here. In a way, we are fellowshipping. We are sharing. We are talking together. Mm. So sitting in the presence of God, worshiping him, magnifying his name, talking to him, you hearing him talk back to you, that intimacy mm. is developed. That connection makes you to be able to unleash what is on the inside, mm. on the outside. And then you mention one key, go. After Jesus had told them, this sign shall follow and all that. I believe. The Bible mm. says, and they went everywhere preaching the gospel. And the Lord was with them, confirming his word with signs and wonders. Mm. Even after all the, 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 the knowing, the believing, the praying, you don't step out. Mm. The giant will still be living inside, boiling, 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 mm. boiling, boiling, boiling. But uh, you have to go out. Mm. You have to take a step. Mm. You have to get into the into in, into the into the war, and mm. then you see God in action. And like uh, for those of us in the redeemed Christian Church of God, our Daddy, the General Overseer, keeps telling us, "Move, take action." Okay, you so until you take sorry, sir, hands. until you take actions, that's when you know that you have the giant yeah, in you. you Without must. taking the actions, you don't know. How can you, if you don't get onto the pitch to play football, how will you know, know you have skills? Skills to play. Mm. Ah, if you don't step into the boxing ring, how can you know you go oh, so I can do it? You know, uh, sometimes. Uh, I look until back. we make that move. Yeah. Until I. I've had, in my own little way, I've had some experiences that somehow. I, I give one funny example. Several years ago, I was pastoring the church and. You know, my house was not too far from the church, so, and we had a crutch in the school. So once I leave the church and I go home, and any person come that he needs prayer, the woman at the crutch will take her phone. Pastor, somebody is waiting for you in the church. So at the point I discovered that I didn't have time to rest. So I told her, once I leave church and I go home, don't call me. Home. So one day I was just entering the house, and she started calling. Madam, what's the problem? I told you don't call me when I go home. She said, I know, Pastor, this one, you must come back, or you must come back. As you just left, this woman just came. She's heavily pregnant, and she has problems. I said, give her the phone. Madam, what's the problem? She said, she's overdue. She's just coming from hospital. She would think she's in labor. When she reached hospital, they would chase her back home. That she, today, too, she went. They said she should go back home, that she's not ready yet. She's tired. Your months have passed. I was tired. I said, put your hand on your tummy. I just wanted to dismiss her. So put your hand on your tummy. Let's pray. I said, Father, bring that baby out in the mighty name of Jesus. I said, go home. Less than 20 minutes later, she called me. She had put to bed at home. <laughs> oh, so that woman, she looked at me as one big man of God. <laughs> but me, I knew myself that I just wanted to dismiss her to stop disturbing me. <laughs> But you see, the God we serve says, I will back you up. Mm. So it sometimes it's just, look, testimonies that sometimes you hear people sharing and mentioning names of men of God. The men of God themselves will just, I mean, except they are not, they don't know God. They will be smiling. <laughs> Was it me? <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes, uh, sir, I think, I, I, think I, I have to agree with you that most times, I won't say it's out of ignorance because I've seen a case what, in fact, that's actually happened to me. I was leaving the office and I didn't have 
much in my hand, yeah. Tifa. Yeah. And I ap happened to meet an elderly person that which he was also going along my way to yes. Lagos. And I greeted him, ah, thank you, daddy. Was there. Are you going home? I said, yes, I'm actually in a hurry. Yeah. I'm going to Lagos. Said, okay, pop in, let me take you. While I was going, inside, I don't know if it has happened to you, inside mm -hmm. of me said, oh, I wish this man can just give me 200 naira to add to my <laughs> Tifa. <laughs> I'll be so grateful. At least this will take me home. I just said it inside of me. Mm. Getting down, the man just said, I'm sorry, I don't have change, but just take this 200 naira. <laughs> That's good. And with him, I said, oh, God. I think I would have just... Asked for something bigger. <laughs> I don't know if it had happened, but I know a lot it of does. people have come across. It does. Not once, not twice. That but has happened. You say, before you call, I will answer. And I say, God. Is this how this, you understand? And there are times that you will pray and pray, you won't get it. I said, ah. But sometimes I just thought of this thing and it just came. Mm, mm. So it shows that we have the giants in us. It's there. It's just for us to have that boldness mm. to come out. Mm. Some it might just be preaching, evangelism. Mm. Some it might just be you laying hands to other people Lay and they're receiving too. healings. Somebody and comes to you and says, he's sick. Oh, so we are, brother, let's pray. Hold the hands of the person and pray. You've done your own. Oh, leave the rest to God. What if uh, it does nothing happens? What if something happens? That's what our daddy always tell us. And like he said, you pray for one those early days as a pastor. I had it was so discouraging. This woman rushed to my house with her baby. The baby was almost dying. I could feel life, no life left. I cried my heart to God. And after the woman left, I went back to my room and continued to pray oh, to the evening. And I got the message that the child was dead. So, oh God, why did you call me? Why did you allow her to bring this child to me? But you see, with a little more maturity, I realized that it was not about the child, it was about my pride. Why should I pray for somebody and the person die? I'm not God. I've done my part. Mm. Done my part. So, mm. do I know the future of the child? Do I know why God. I, I, I don't have, but I've also known many, many, many more that I prayed for and they didn't die and they lived. Mm. So, just do your part. There's something inside us, something inside us that we need to continually develop. You know, it's a fan to flame. That Bible passage that Paul says, tear up. Another, another translation says, fan to flame. Mm. Fan to flame, fan mm. to flame. Recently, Daddy was talking with us. When I said Daddy, I mean the pastor here, the boy. I talked about praying in the spirit. Mm. In Jude, the book of Jude, it says, Jude verse 1 verse 20 or so. He said, building up yourselves in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Do you understand why immediately the Holy Spirit comes upon someone, the first thing he does is to speak in tongue? You know, the Bible says that if you control the tongue, you control the body. So the Spirit starts to control of our lives by taking over the tongue. And if you spend more time praying in the Holy Ghost, you will see yourself also operating because it's like you are staring spirit up. Take note, we are spirit, we are soul, we are body. A lot of times we feed our bodies mm. very well. Mm. We take good care of our outer man, mm. but we take very little care mm. of the spirit mm. within. Mm. Thank God we have just finished 49 days fasting and prayer in the redeemed Christian Church of God. For some people, the rest of this year, no more fasting. <laughs> Well, at this point, I'm sure you've been part of Springs of Life. We want to go on a quick break, and when we come back, we'll still have Pastor Jonathan Kuchi here with us. Don't go away. Be right back. Thank you. Heavens International Center. 
believe that what you see and hear here will arouse your faith and your life will never remain the same. Challenge God using what you see here as a point of contact with your miracle. Welcome back, still on Springs of Live on Dove Television. Just in case you join us, uh, we've been with Pastor Jonathan Kuchi, one of our very own pastor in the redeemed Christian Church of God, beautiful Gate Parish, Lagos Province 1. We've been here talking about the sleeping giant in us, awaking those giants in us, what God has asked us to do. It's high time you pick up your phone and dial the number displayed right there on your TV screen, but remember to mute the volume, tell us your name and where you're calling from. If you have any question bothering your mind or you wanting to explain one or two things about your faith, yes, you want a good explanation about the word of God, please kindly call the numbers right there on your TV. TV screen. Remember, mute the volume, tell us your name and where you are calling from. What must I do so that I don't kill that giant in me? What must I do so that I don't go against? Maybe one of the things, as I was just meditating, one of the things that helped me to grow and I'm making me to still grow is the Bible says, covet earnestly the best gifts. When I went to secondary school and I got born again, the first day, because I came from an Orthodox background where I never heard about speaking in tongues, mm. the day I heard someone speaking in tongues in a church fellowship, after the service, I went to him and said, what language were you speaking? <laughs> was it Hebrew or Greek? He said he was speaking in tongues. And I said, I asked questions. And I told him, I want that Holy Spirit. Mm. Oh, I told I have, have, I have everything that I need to be as a Christian. I didn't know there's something called Holy Spirit. I said, I want the Holy Spirit. After yeah. I get it. Okay, we'll come back to you. Hello? Hello, good morning. Yes, thank you for calling. Please go ahead. Your name and where you're calling from. My name is Stephen. I'm calling from Owoti. All right, please uh, mute the volume on your TV set and go on with your question. Thank you. Hello? Hello, good morning. Yes, we can hear you. Please go ahead, sir. My name is Eden. I'm calling from Owodi. Still listening to this. Okay, I've actually done that. Okay, please go ahead. Okay, what I want to ask is, what I want to ask, you've been believing, you've been believing God to speak in tongues, and you have not really, I've not really started speaking. What would I do to? So what will I do? That's, okay, I said I want I I am I want to speak in tongues. As in I like I like to speak in tongues, and I've prayed to God for for help, and mm. I've not really gotten help. So what will I do in that aspect? Now I'm going to pray for you right now, but when you leave, go and see your pastor to pray for you. Okay. 
Father, I ask that you will fill your daughter with the Holy Spirit right now where she is. Amen. In the Amen. mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father, because I know you have done it. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Now look for a corner after this program. Watch the program. When the program is finished, just find a place, pray, and see what God will do. But go and see your pastor Amen. for more information. All right, sir. God bless you. Thank you. So like I was saying, Anytime I saw something more than what I had. So I went, they said we should pray, I fasted. My classmates, they prayed for me and I got filled with the Holy Spirit. Another day we were in a secondary school fellowship and this young man was preaching. And he made an altar call, people came out and he stretched forth his hands and somebody fell. Ah, after the service, I went to meet him, I said, what happened? What did you do to that boy that he fell? He said he was slain in the spirit. I had never seen it before. I said, so where did you get that kind of power from? <laughs> he was you, didn't even touch, you didn't even touch him. Okay. He said he has been fasting for three days. The next day, I started my three days fasting and prayer. He said, it's not out of competition, but I, so somebody, somebody can, can have, you know. Sometimes when I'm in the camp and the Jewish ministry, people are giving testimonies, I'm in tears. I'm like, God, this is great, but this is my father and the Lord. When am I going to start operating at that kind of level? That's, that, once I see someone has something higher than what I've got, I now see that, oh, so it's possible to operate at mm. a higher level. So mm. that hunger, if you don't have spiritual hunger, for some people, is when they see somebody with a brand new car, they want to have it. They see somebody with a fine suit, they want to have it. They see somebody's shoe. But the grace of God you see on people is what, is, the Bible permits us to covet that one. Every other form of covetousness is wrong. But Spiritual gifts say covet earnestly, earnestly, seriously mm. the best gifts. Mm. Ah, before mm. I leave this world, I know what God, I want God to use me to do. So right. it should be our hunger. Mm. Hello, you're on to Springs of Life. Hello? Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Please go ahead. Your name and where you're calling from. Okay. Um, my name is Elizabeth. All right, Elizabeth. I'm calling for Majekula. All right, please go ahead with your question, Elizabeth. Hello. Okay. Um. Hello. All right, please. You keep listening to your television. Please mm. don't do that. Don't listen to yourself while you're speaking with us. Just go ahead and tell us your question. Thank you. Hello? Hello. Thank you for calling, sir. Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Your name and where you're calling from. Anthony is my name. I'm calling from Sherry. Okay, Mr. Anthony. Go ahead, sir. Uh, I use some parents on this phone. Get to some questions. The pastor says, let's speak to this church. I don't know what you need to speak to us. So you started with Bible standards. First Corinthians 14. Okay. You don't teach people how to speak in tongues, but when people are filled with the Holy Spirit, they speak in tongues. Mm. Now, in First Corinthians 14, it's given a regulation on the issue of speaking in tongues. There is a difference between praying in tongues Tongue. and prophesying in tongues. Mm. That is where you are giving a word in tongues that requires an interpretation. But when it's in a prayer meeting, Paul said, I speak in tongues more than you all. He said, you shouldn't discourage both from speaking in tongues. But if you prophesy in tongues, there should be an interpreter. Mm. If you prophesy in tongues, there should yes. be an interpreter. If not, for example, if I come to you and I start speaking to you in tongues, what do you, what do you get out of it? I will understand what you're hand? saying. So, but if we are in a prayer meeting and we say, okay, we have prayed in understanding, now we want to pray in the spirit because the Bible says when we speak in tongues, we speak in our known language, we speak mysteries, you know, so there are prayers. The Bible also tells us that there are some we don't know how to pray, but the Spirit prays through us mm. with groanings which cannot be uttered. So when we are in deep in prayer, serious prayer meetings, 
where we are, for example, when we want to pray for Nigeria now in a church, there are some prayer points I raised. I will be in trouble because there are some APC people in my church, there are some PD people in church. That, so if I say, let's pray that God will move Nigeria to the next level, I may be in trouble. So, but when I pray in the spirit, eh, so I'm safe. I'm safe. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hello, you're on the springs of life. Good morning. Thank you for calling, Ma. Please go ahead, Ma. Yes, I'm, I'm calling from Delta Prophet 14 at Okay, okay. Ma. Please. I'm so happy for this program. I'm so happy. Mm. Why I call you is about the Holy Spirit. Mm. If a child of God really have the power of the Holy Spirit in him, there is no way. Immediately you speak the, 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 the tongue, the Spirit will interpret it for you. Mm. That is what I understand. And again, as a child of God, there is no way wherever you are going, it is the Spirit in you that will direct you, mm. not by yourself. Mm. And when you are speaking in church, in tongue in church, Mm. When you are speaking in tongues, the pastor that is there, you understand. Even you yourself will understand. There mm. was a day immediately I entered a regime, Christian church of God. I've been asking somebody that, ah, what is the meaning of this speaking in tongues? How do people will understand among God? But when I also now see the power of God in me, I begin to speak, and I see interpretation will come out immediately I speak it. So I appreciate it. In the name of the Lord, and I'm happy for this program this month. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, my God bless you, yeah, man. What she's saying is, you see, even when you are alone and you are praying in the spirit, you pray, and a lot of times you can understand in your heart what you are praying about. You know, and and when you give a word, it's just that these days in most of our churches we don't, we we are not, we are not. Let me say, we are not. We are too tight. We are too tight. We put the brakes on the Holy Spirit. When we release ourselves, I mean, when I got born again, even in secondary school, it was commonplace to hear people speak and someone interpret. I mean, this was so common. These days, we need a revival, maybe. Mm. <laughs> and that revival is starting now. <laughs> Amen. Starting now. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hello? Hello? Hello, good morning. Yes, we can hear you. Please mute the volume on your TV set. We can practically hear a voice from the background. Okay, please hold on. Let me do that. Please, I want to ask a question. Hello? Good morning. Yes, sir. We can hear you, sir. Please go ahead, sir. Okay, I want to ask a question. Hmm. This speaking in tongues as a gift, like I've read the Corinthians, is speaking in tongue the only gift from God, or is speaking in tongue the greatest gift from God? That is my number two question. Then my number three question is that is speaking tongue, speaking in tongue the only gift that you have to prove that you are yes, a child of God, that you are spirit filled? Mm -hmm. No. Right. Okay. I answer the spirit speaking in tongues is the gateway gift. Hmm. And uh, I didn't intend this discussion today to be a discussion on speaking, speaking in tongues. We're talking about the giant in us. Mm. And I remember saying that on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came upon them, the first evidence we had that the Holy Spirit had come upon them, they were speaking in unknown tongues. And I explained that in the book of James, the Bible says that if a man can control his tongue, he controls the rest of the body. So the Holy Spirit in his in controlling our lives starts by controlling our tongue. Mm. And he has given us the gift of the Holy Spirit for our personal edification. The Holy Spirit, the gift of speaking in tongues is first of all for my own personal prayer life. It's something for me to be praying in the secret. Mm. It's not even a thing for public display. In fact, I wouldn't subscribe to a situation where you come to church and from beginning to the end you are praying in tongues. You don't edify that you are just edifying yourself. That's why there's this detailed explanation in First, I mean, first Corinthians chapter 14. The gift of speaking in tongues is for me, in my closet, if I want to pray for one hour, for two hours, for three hours, for four hours, what will I be saying in English? But when the spirit takes over, you are, the spirit is the one praying and mm. is guiding you and leading you to mm. pray. So that is the purpose of the gift of the Holy Spirit. When it comes to 
the public use of the gift of the Holy Spirit, if you are in a prayer meeting with believers, believers prayer meeting, believers prayer meeting, everybody there, or majority of the people there feel the Holy Spirit, and you want to really, really intercede, you will discover that you need to do that in the Spirit. But when you are on a crusade ground with unbelievers, you discover that you will not give too much attention to display of speaking in tongues. That's mm. why you hardly hear that a Jew, when he's preaching, then he switched to tongues. No, 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 no. He gives a word of knowledge. Yeah, during time of prayer, you may need to switch to tongues and return back to your prayer. But tongues is for personal prayer, first of all. And then in the public, it may come as a prophecy mm. and it will be backed up with interpretation. Mm. I think those explanations are there is not for display, it's not for play, it's not for joke, it's not for boasting, and it's not for bringing confusion in the body of Christ. Mm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hello? Yes, please, sir, can you speak up? Your name and where you're calling from. Hello? Hello? Please don't listen to your television. Try to uh, speak with us. Tell us your name and where you are calling from. Thank you. Hello? Hello. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Please do call us, but remember to mute the volume on your TV set so that we can hear you loud and clear. Thank you. Hello? Hello. Good morning, ma. Yes, thank you for calling, ma. Please go ahead, ma. This one, because my name is Eruluwa uh, Tutu. All right, so... so I, I just called, I, I called, I called, no, I, I didn't call for the, uh, the question, the, I'm not talking, I'm not, I didn't call for the question you were talking about, talking about. I just called on my own, and then I want to ask the man of God, what is that after praying a violent prayer, a violent prayer, you pray a violent prayer all the time, and at the end of the prayer, you find yourself eating in the drink. Hmm. What you find yourself eating with change after praying the violent prayer. Maybe after you maybe after the prayer you sleep off, the next thing you find yourself eating with change. What is the cause of it? What can you do to stop it? Yeah. Thank you, Ma. Well see, I don't like questions that are general. Because this person you will need to sit with you, ask you more questions know your background, know what else you do, know, have a bit of history before I can give an answer because there is no general answer to that kind of specific situation. Mm. So, so I think I, I want her to person, call back to call later, so I can speak with her privately. No, this kind of person, see your pastor. Or if you think your pastor can understand, find a man of God you know because you need to sit down and have a serious counseling session and a prayer session. The person will understand the situation and I can address it specifically. Those are not the kind of things. You can't give a general answer. Hmm. Me, that is sitting here, if I sleep and I find that I ate in the dream, when I wake up, I will say, Father, it is written in your word. If I eat anything deadly, if I drink poison, it will not hurt me. Hmm. So I nullify what I ate in the blood of Jesus and I go on my way. I will not even, but because the devil does not have anything to do to me. I know who I am. Mm. Greater is he that is in me than he, he that, that is, is in, in the, the world. world. So that's me. So, but I can't tell you that because I don't know your background. I don't know what you know. Mm. <laughs> so she may need to call you privately uh -huh. and so. still talk with you. Hello? Hello? Please always mute the volume on your TV set. There's a bit of delay while we transmit. And you see, when you talk about violent prayer, Sometimes maybe you are in a prayer meeting, a preacher is leading prayers, and you just follow, and you are praying those prayers. You just follow, you are praying those prayers. Sometimes I'm, af I'm afraid. Why? Because if you already have, you are already somewhat in the camp of the devil, and uh, you go to church, and they are leading prayers against the devil, and you follow them to pray. When somehow one of your legs is still in the camp of the oh, devil, devil. Hmm. somebody is your master, and you are insulting him, he will deal with you. <laughs> So, one leg in, one leg out. So there are some you don't know where I you belong. You are I just need to sit to... with some, that kind of person. I understand what's your spiritual history. What's, I need to know some of this information before I can. Hmm. By the way, spiritual knowledge is, is, is so superior. Like I, as we said at the beginning, study the word of God. Leave Show the issue of eating in the dream. First of all, are you born again? Are you filled with the Holy Spirit? Do you know you are a child of God? Do you know that you have overcome the devil? 
What do you know about you and the devil? This, this, is, this is so. If you have some knowledge, some things will just disappear from your life. Mm. The devil is an attempter. It's always attempting. Mm. But you know who you are. You call his bluff. Mm. Call it bluff. <laughs> Hello, this is our last caller for today. You're on to Springs of Life. Hello? Yes, sir, we can hear you. Please go ahead, sir. Okay. Um, don't think that, um, uh, what I want to ask is not concerning the thing of life, and but then something that affecting my spiritual life, and then uh, I don't know why, just read something. Okay, can you call after the program? We're rounding off the program so you can speak with the pastor privately. Okay. Thank you, sir. God bless you, sir. All right. This is where we want to say a big thank you to our pastor, Pastor Jonathan Kuchi, for coming on this platform thank for you. a good explanation of awakening the sleeping giant in us. Thank you so much. We'll round it off with a prayer from you, sir. Oh, my father, I thank you for the word which has come through to us today. My cry and the cry on behalf of everyone who is a part of this program today is that we will not die with what you have put inside us. Amen. But we will ignite the fire. Amen. We will stir up the gifts in us. Amen. We will use them and make profit for your kingdom. Amen. Please do it for us, O God. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Once again, thank you for coming thank on this program. Thank you so program. much God for bless you. asking me to come. All right, to everyone who has been part of Springs of Life on this wonderful day, we want to appreciate your call. For everyone who was calling to this program to ask questions, thank you so much. God bless you. To the camera crew in the house, to the MCR, to the engineers, to the director there, thank you so much. God bless you. Remember to like us on every social network. Um, like us, send us messages, tweet at us, get to watch an exciting and interesting program on our YouTube channel. Uh, be part of Dove Television family and God bless you as you do so. Of oh, God has laid it in your heart to sponsor any of our program you've seen on this on this platform on Dove Television. Please feel free to place an advert or feel free to call us and we'll be glad to have you on board. Stay tuned to Dove Television for more exciting programs coming your way. I remain Olua Femi Odunton. Have a wonderful day ahead of you. Thank you and God bless you. Amen.